Good morning, afternoon, evening. Welcome to 50 Questions Friday for actually March 18th of 2022. Um, if you are here live, please do join us on the chat side here. And otherwise, if you have a question, please do drop it in the questions tab. Uh, the chat side is for you to connect with everybody else who is here. Um, we always have some great people on. Uh, let's see. And otherwise, if you are watching on YouTube after the fact, if you'd like to join us live, you're welcome to sign up for our newsletter, which we will let you know when the lives are. All right. Well, good morning, everybody. Hey, Connie from Maine. Now I know we got people from all over here today. <laughs> Buddy, lots of my favorite folks on here today. So, um, yeah, we'll just get things started here. Um, we'll go ahead and jump into the heart space as we do with all of our gatherings here. So if you'd like to join us in going into that sacred space of the heart, it's just putting your attention onto the physical heart where you find your light, your soul's fire. And it's easier if you close your eyes, you may leave them open if you wish. But closing your eyes, putting your attention onto your heart, and imagining connecting heart to heart with the earth. And we breathe in that loving, healing energy of the earth up through the feet, and right into the heart. Next, we connect heart to heart with creation. Source, soul, creator, God. Breathe in that support of unconditional loving energy. Right into the heart. The third breath is breathing in that energy of the earth, the energy of creation. Bringing them both together within you so that that light from earth goes to creation, from creation to earth. You are the channel for that energy. And it moves you into the heart space and you are grounded, connected, and very much supported in that sacred space of the heart. Uh, let's see, so we do have one question this morning from, the, uh, from email. And the question is in regards to the immune system. Uh, the question was asked, what tool would best work with the immune system and how to work with that? So, you know, having, having your physical body in the field of any of the tools is going to help support. But to work with the immune system actively, um, what you can do in all I shall show you right here is I would suggest the shaman or sorry, not the shaman's wand, the wisdom wand is what I would suggest. But any of the wands is perfect. Um, I just have the wisdom wand just carries the newest and most expansive energetics. Take your wand, find a photograph of your immune system. When we do work and we run energy, we can run energy by simply having our attention to the space. You know, in a lot of the videos that we talk about, teach about the wands, is that you can imagine um, that your big toe is right here and you're sending energy to your big toe. And as you do the wanding and you have your attention there on your big toe and the wand, you can begin to feel when it is actually going there if you if you're sensitive to the energetics and you can feel the wand keep working with the wand especially on your left hand and you will you'll get more sensitive to it but it's really a fun thing to have that imagination of wanding something specific now with all of the work that we do it is a visualization imagination intention is the is the prior paradigm in the work that we do we're shifting into a way to where you don't need to know specifically the organs of your immune system but for the work that we're going to do here today is we have to know we have to be able to see these specific organs 
for the style of work that we do for running energy with a wand. The newer work that we do is going into the heart, bringing in all of that supporting light that we are, and then shining our light onto the immune system or the issue or whatever that is. But in a way that you actively with your imagination, visualization, intentions run energy. So here we go. Very simple. You pull out your little picture that you have of your immune system. Take your wand and go through each one of the little organs here. So let's say we're going to start right here. The tonsil. The tonsil right there. We're going to take our wand. You're in the heart space. You're imagining and intending that this is your tonsil. You're going to sit here, run energy to your tonsil. Do your little circles or figure eights. And just run energy to the tonsil. I can feel that. Then you go to your next gland or organ. So, you know, your immune system is comprised of many of your glands, um, you know, because the, the, the lymphs or the, yeah, your immune system is all through your body. So there's many parts to it. So you just pick a part, you go through, you wand it. That is an easy way to do your immune system. Now, once you become familiar with this, or if you already know the immune system, all you have to do is be like, okay, I'm going to imagine my immune system and I'm going to wand it. And there you do. There you go. You're running energy to your immune system. For those of us who are not as knowledgeable about all these little parts and pieces to the human body, then we need a visual. We need a reference because when you are running energy, you need to be able to know what it is. And if you can't visualize it within your own being, use the photo. Anyway, please play with this. This is really so simple and it's so huge in the way that you can run energy. And it doesn't have to be for you. It can be for any person. It can be for an animal. Uh, it can be for a tree. You know, you take a photo of a tree. Um, you know, it's... Pretty phenomenal stuff. Anyway, all right, here we go. Questions this morning. So, question from John. I have a wisdom wand in the quantum heart coil. What can the wings of talk do that these tools cannot? Um, sure, John. So, the, the wisdom wand is going to be pretty similar to the um, to the wings of talk and the work that you can do because it is something that you can take an active role with that wings of talk use it to create those columns of light just like you would with the wand or you can use it passively and just put it in the space now the wings of talk is working a little bit different passively in that you just place it in the space and it just keeps your space clear um, it's one of those tools that you can sit it and forget it and it works through the environment or you can take an act role in it and the wings of talk to me is more more an environmental tool though you can certainly use it with yourself and that's just my my preference with it is working with the environment but i know a lot of people use the wings of talk as their single healing tool um so the quantum heart coil is for your very personal space. So the, the wisdom wand and the wings of talk have similarities to them. Um, if you're actively using your wisdom wand, you know, your columns of light, your, you know, you're running energy with it and you're creating your columns of light for the environment then you really wouldn't need the Wings of Talk. The Wings of Talk was designed um, primarily for geopathic, geomagnetic portal vortexes and clearing of tough entities um, that wouldn't be cleared. 
Um, so that was the real true reason for the Wings of Talk for the creation was to clear entities. Portal Vortex is just doing that deep, heavy clearing. Um, so I do know some people here, some folks recently that had a wisdom wand, but they were in a space to where they just couldn't use it you know, well enough to do the clearing for their space. So they had to get the wings of talk to allow it to just start to do the work to where they could be in a space to, to be able to do that clearing work for themselves. Um, so gosh, John, you know, I, I'd almost say having the wisdom wand and you are actively using it, you wouldn't need the wings of talk. The wings of talk is a great supportive field. And again, something you can sit it and forget it, and you can actively work with it as well. So basically, I would go into the heart space, sit with it, and feel what you're being drawn to um, when you're in the heart. Because our head always has the ideas of what we think we'll do with that tool, but you know, just be in the heart with it and see. Um, because there are it's still an apple and an orange those two because there's a lot of different energetics in there but there's a lot of the same fields in there as well uh the wings of talk has a lot more of that support from talk and the master healer and in, in, in the blues the the master beings that come from that other universe out of duality that come here and support so that's another nice thing about the wings of talk is that you also have that support from those beings right there uh alan i have a question about the ascension grid pyramid if we place a mirror underneath and one on top of it facing each other would there be an energetic change and what if we add the everything tensor ring under the same pyramid so if you if you're using a um a mirror with that basically it's just going to be your it's going to be you that is doing the shifting in the energy by your intentions. Um, your, you know, even if they are, you know, not very conscious forefront intentions, you have an intention, you have an idea with that mirror. And so when you're using that with that, it is going to be you that is creating whatever comes through with that energetics, however you're using that. But just the mirror alone without intention, it's just sitting on a mirror, um, isn't going to do anything with the energetics. It is actually, when you're using the mirror, it is actually you that is doing the work. Um, so, but what if you add the everything ring to it? You know, add... Yeah, adding the everything ring to any of these tools, especially the pyramids, um, and any of the tools that work in the environment, you know, the, the everything ring does add a lot of flavors and layers to, to the field. Um, and so, yeah, they, they are great with the little ascension grid pyramids, the everything rings are. Um, they're great to experiment with for sure. And when you're using it with the Ascension Grid Pyramids, I actually have one in my car. I'm pretty sure it's the everything ring. And it, it it calms everything down. I mean, it harmonizes that energy. If if you find that the everything ring is a little chaotic, the pyramids harmonize it quite a bit. So uh, let's see. Micah, have you ever made a full human sized generator that could be stood in and then formed around the person standing within. Um, you know, we, we used to make giant Genesa crystals, which is the, you know, the geometry of the tensor for, tensor field generator. We used to make giant Genesa crystals and try to roll around in them and things. Um, but as far as the generators, I think the largest tensor field generator we have is probably about 30 inches. Um, well, no, I take that back. We have our giant 36 foot pyramid and we have about a four foot Gaia sphere on that one. Um, so that's about the largest that we've made for a, a sphere, a generator or Gaia sphere is about a four foot Gaia sphere. Um, and yeah, that's definitely, definitely something that I want to do so so yeah 
like uh, we we are you know that's something that's always been a dream and is to find that um is to come into my own philanthropy i always say find my philanthropist but no come into my own to where i can start to create these public projects to create create giant giant energy creations in public parks and in city centers um, that will cover cities and do the clearing, the harmonizing, everything. So that is something that I very much um, look forward to doing at some point in time, Micah, would be to make those giant projects um, for sure. But yeah, the four-foot Gaia sphere, it, it's, it's a fun one to sit in for sure. Would the quantum grid point also harmonize my everything ring? Yes, for sure. So the quantum grid point um, is going to be bringing through basically that same field as the ascension grid pyramids. And it also has the same field that you find on the outside of the giant ascension pyramids. Um, so these little beauties right here are pretty amazing um, I don't push them a whole lot because I'm the one that makes all these things <laughs> but I tell you um, they're pretty amazing these little quantum grid points are because um, they do expand to that size of the home and um, yeah you can add your you can add whatever other rings to these two your everything ring or whatever it may be and it does it does amplify uh, the energies that come out of there. So we can jump over here to chat. It's kind of a quiet morning and day. It's uh, <laughs> it's definitely been different energies here. I know for for everybody. Um, so let's see. I was I've been trying to come up with a meditation to do here with everybody it just still hasn't come together yet um really want to start making time to create the product videos again um because you know gosh it's been almost two years since we've been doing our product videos and so we need to pick those up again um and i was just thinking if there was anything else new that is that is coming through right now um Still waiting on silver tubes, but I really, really want to make these silver wisdom wands. Um, kind of a smaller wand, but it's, it's you know, it's an in-between size. So here's your full-size wisdom wand. And I don't have a mini wisdom wand, but this is a little bit bigger than a mini. But these silver ones are pretty amazing this is about the only thing that i know of for sure that we have on the plates um, for the newer tools we're still working with the wisdom tensor field generators hopefully that comes through sometime pretty soon um, that energetic and i know there's new energies waiting to come through um, we're just waiting to catch up ourselves before you know these new energies come through but um been having a lot of uh and having a lot of epiphanies on on how we are personally creating our entire structure of reality um because we we were doing work uh just the other day brenda had a client that was um had an aspect of her that was coming in and basically overriding her creation because I, I always see the the person and this larger aspect of them, you know, I just call it the soul, but there was a different aspect of her that was affecting her entire creation in reality um, in a negative way. She kept having implants and entities that would pop in and portal vortexes that would open in the home and the office. Um, and it was tied to that aspect it was a part of her that was in co-creation bringing all of that stuff into her world and she, you know we've been working with her for for a few months and could never clear and then finally we found it in that aspect of her soul 
and um so anyway i guess i'm just sharing a little bit of stories of epiphanies with um just more and more about what our structure is for our own creation because that's where i really am passionate about is consciousness interfacing with energy which patterns into all creation and i know we are getting very close to that and um so anyway, it's just exciting stuff. I'm sorry, I was just talking. Whoa, <laughs> see if you guys had any more questions. Um, with the quantum grid point, also, oh, shoot, we didn't have any new questions. All right, so you guys, um, that might be it for today. Then, um, yeah, new things, new energies. Uh, gosh, just keep holding on and letting go and surrendering out there because. You know, that is truly the new paradigm is just surrendering. The more we hold on to things, the more we get pummeled to let go of them. So if you're having a hard time, step back and just let go of everything. Because um, I know that the rest of humanity is going to start going through all the stuff that we've all been going through for the past few years. And, you know, it's... It's going to be pretty amazing once all the humanity starts going through it. And they go through it with a little bit more grace and ease than the rest of us did. Um, let's see. Laura, what tool can help me with my energy? As soon as I get home, I feel tired. Um, Laura, I would almost say, you know, the... The Wisdom Wand Pendant might be a good one for you. Um, just to wear, but then actively use. Um, to me, it feels like, you know, just need to shift the energy a little bit in the home is, is kind of how it's presenting to me. Um, yeah, it's almost like when you get there, it's almost like a you're like in a dome and you present as just kind of, yeah, head down, kind of sad and tired. So... So just go in and um, I tell you what, everybody, let's, um, well, no, I'm sorry. I was going to do a, a group project where we could all come in and, and create a column of light there in that space. And I'd like to get a little bit more prepared to create that space for us to do that. Um, but what I would say, Laura, with that space is to just just shift your space in there. Um, I don't know if you have any of the tools. If you do have a tool, a tensor field generator might be a good one to have in the space there. Um, but to me, it yeah, it just feels like you just need to be in there and totally stand in your power and your light, be fully grounded to the earth, connected to creation just become that column of light and bring in more of you and just keep bolstering your light until you are just that radiant sun in your space and just ask your light to radiate out and to clear and release and harmonize everything in your space in your world in your creation so it brings us back to the point that everything is energy. All energy is here to serve you. This is your creation. There is no outside influences causing harm and distress to any single one of us. It is all our creation. So when you step into your light and your power, you start to slough off some of those old miscreations, some of those old structures that no longer serve you, these structures that are heavy, that contain traumas that are just limiting structures. That is our reality creation. So the more you go in and you shine light into your reality creation, the more you loosen it up and the more you begin to create more fluidity in your creation. Everything seems so rigid and is what it is. 
everything is fluid. Um, so, yeah, work at not only is it your environment, um, but it, you know, your home environment outside, but it's, it's, it's the internal environment as well. So you're not going to be able to just move out of the house, but you know how to find a, a, a better space. So just create that space right there within you and expand that out. Um, yeah. Nika, share more about aspects of our soul creation and integrating in a new way. Um, do you, th so gosh, yeah, that's, the integration of our soul aspects, because man, our soul aspects is a huge thing because that's something that I've talked about with this new um, quantum heart coil pendant is that it is drawing in our aspects and harmonizing and integrating them. And so what I would suggest would be to go back through the 50 questions Friday where we did a, um, where we did a meditation Gosh, and I'm not sure which 50 questions Friday, Friday that was where we did a meditation where um, we came into, well, the one on December 3rd, I think it is, was a good one because that's where we got ourselves into that zero point space and we brought everything that we were in into that space. And that is one of the ways to integrate. And then we also did a meditation not too long ago with this quantum heart coil pendant and on that meditation that is where we worked even deeper with those soul aspects on the clearing and the release um, and yeah it might be here by the by the end of the year that we really get deep deep into this um, as we learn more because things have really been coming up with the soul aspects and how much they affect all of our creation um, not to put something outside of ourselves. Um, anyway, uh, we'll move on here. Nika, do you think war may be coming to coming up to leave if we get this thing expansive this go around? Well, oh gosh. So, do I think the war that we might be able to step out of war as we expand consciousness? And my gosh, yes, you know, and don't let all of, um, you know, we're not living in the same world. The world before was supporting all of the duality creation. That is what was in support. So that was wars, famine, the struggle, the struggle. That was in the old world. That's, that's what it was being held for was that duality creation. <clears throat> we're stepping into a whole new world right now and the space is innately held to step out of all that um so yes the more light that we shine in our own self and let that radiate out in the world because we don't want to half-ass our light we don't want to just be like okay i'm shining my light damn it you know and i'm gonna make all the the Russians go home or whatever, you know, um, it, it's, it's different than that. It's, um, once you get into that space in the heart and you've brought in all of your light and when you look at things, they don't seem the same. You don't go in there the same way with your same judgments of, of a war or of anything that you're working on. Um, and that's the space that we need to be is that space of non-judgment and just holding that light. Um, and, and so do I think that we're going to step out of, out of war? Yeah. If that's in the highest and best, if it's still needed to still shake people up, I trust in that, you know, I really do trust in the process that we're going through right now, because like I say, the entire universe, this world, the space is held for things to come through differently now but during that transition that we are in there's a lot of chaos a lot of chaos in that transition 
So right now is an even more important time to be fully and truly in your light. When you so what I was trying to say here a minute ago about being in your light and doing it fully is, is that when you stand in your light and your power, you don't have to do anything because you affect the rest of creation so much more by simply truly being in your light and in your power and not having to do anything. You affect creation so much more being in your light and in your power than if you go out and it in the streets or whatever it is um, so you don't have to do to affect great great change on this planet um, just got some pure organic jojoba oil to apply to my skin and heal my wounds what tensor ring would you suggest to energize it i love jojoba that's why i'm always so shiny a wisdom ring is my favorite or using the wisdom wand um, because any of the tensor rings with oil is phenomenal because it's put such a high spin rate to the oil and the oil holds it longer than water. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, you know, it just holds a spin rate. Um, so yeah, the, in the wisdom ring is going to bring through the highest aspect of the consciousness of that plant. Um, so any tensor ring is great with oils. But uh, for the energetic side of things, I would say the wisdom ring, just because it's bringing through um, more aspects of the plant. Uh, can you put a section on YouTube channel for all the meditations? I know. You know, actually, we, we do have on the YouTube channel, there's like the 50 questions Fridays ones. There's some of the meditations activations. Um, but gosh, yes, I know. I need somebody to go through all of our YouTubes and basically just take the clippets of the meditations out of all of our YouTubes because um, we got so much good information out there, but it's just scattered everywhere. And that's the same with like our descriptions of what a tensor ring is. Um, yeah, as we are stepping more into the public world, we really do need to kind of refine our information a bit. So, um, yeah, I appreciate the suggestion on getting meditations on on YouTube more refined. All right. Well, everybody, it has been a beautiful time here. Um, sorry, I got spring fever. I'm just ready to go. I'm finally going to take a Friday for a minute. Go ride a motorcycle while it's really nice out. So, um for all of you in the northern hemisphere happy spring oh my goodness for you in the southern hemisphere happy fall oh my goodness another great season um i'll quit talking here and um yeah it was good to see you all here i well it's good to feel you guys all here and i look forward to doing some deeper energy work i mean it's really been calling to come in and start to teach some of these new things that are coming up so there's something cool coming up, coming down the pipeline. So hopefully next Friday, um, pretty sure we're here next Friday. Hopefully we'll have some kind of a fun, cool new meditation and energy. But in the meantime, again, thank you for all being here and for playing and for shining your light. Because <sighs> we're we're gonna we're gonna do some beautiful things in our lifetime here on the planet. All right, you guys, take care. Good seeing you.